नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ व्हाट डज दिस डेटा से आई एम अजय प्रकाश लास्ट वीक आई हैड डन एन एपिसोड ऑन कर्नाटका एंड आई हैड शोन दैट इन द नेक्स्ट इलेक्शन व्हिच इज जस्ट अ फ्यू मंथ्स अवे द बीजेपी इन द कर्नाटका इज गोइंग टू फाइंड इट वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू विन दिस टाइम अराउंड एंड आफ्टर आई डिड दैट एपिसोड अ कपल ऑफ मोर ओपिनियन पोल्स हैड कम व्हिच हैव इंडिकेटेड द सेम थिंग but then there is no point of wasting time on opinion polls we'll look at the data once the elections are over the bhartiya janata party is a very smart party it is able to create narratives about itself which are either true or bordering the truth at times totally false and then they create hypes and now all this is then fed to the public to create a perception the party then banks on the fact that these perceptions will translate into votes for them they know fully well that in general the public doesn't have the time energy or the inclination to cross check these facts now before going ahead in this episode i'll just ask you one question the answer of which you keep in your mind and when the episode is over i will give you the answer and then you can see whether what you knew was true or not now karnataka is known as the bastion of the south for the bhartiya janata party so the question is very simple how many times in the karnataka assembly did the bhartiya janata party get majority and by majority i mean that the party crossed the halfway mark in terms of seats Just a quick reminder before I go ahead if you like the kind of work we are doing do subscribe to my channel and if you like this video please share it among your friends when i say karnataka is the bastion of the south for the bhartiya janata party it becomes very clear from this table i have shown the data here for the number of seats bjp has in the legislative assembly as well as in the lok sabha coming from the states of tamil nadu kerala telangana andhra and karnataka tamil nadu out of 234 assembly seats bjp has 4 and out of the 39 lok sabha seats bjp's current strength is 0 kerala it has 140 assembly seats the strength of bjp is 0 and in the lok sabha out of 22 seats bjp is again 0 Telangana 119 assembly seats BJP has 2 and in the Lok Sabha out of 19 it has 4 Andhra 175 assembly seats BJP is 0 and out of 25 Lok Sabha seats BJP is again 0 and lastly in Karnataka out of 224 seats the current strength of BJP is 118 and in the lok sabha out of 31 it has 25 seats remember 118 is the current strength of the bjp in karnataka assembly in the last 2018 elections it had only 104 seats and was not in power it was the congress and the jds which was in power and then operation kamal happened I'll start by presenting a bird's eye view of the political parties that have been winning the Karnataka assembly elections right after independence. This is a color map and you don't really need to look at the numbers at this point. The number of seats in the assembly is given here at the top in 1952 we started with 99 seats in 1957 and 62 there were 208 seats. went up to 216 in 67 and 72 and after that till today there are 224 assembly seats now if you look at the first part of this graph it's all blue color right up to 1972 the blue color represents the congress the orange color represents the bjp or the jansang the green color the janata party the white janata dal and the light green is jds so from 78 onwards you will notice the green color spikes coming in that is when the janata party was in power thereafter there were a few spikes of the janata dal 
and then the JDS started to come in power around the same time when the BJP, you can see, started winning more seats. So it was only after 94 that actually the BJP started getting some seats in Karnataka and together with JDS, they were able to form the government uh, twice in the state. So now let's try to answer the question. How many times has BJP got a majority in the Karnataka Assembly? It may have formed the government, but did it get majority seats? After independence, there have been 15 elections for the Karnataka State Assembly or the, as it was earlier known, the Mysore State. The number of seats in the assembly is given here in the circle. It started from 99 seats and went up to 224 in 1978. Now, these six elections, we saw the Congress party being the majority party. In, seven, in uh, 52, the Congress had 75% of the seats. In 57, it has 72%. Gradually, it came down to 58% in 67 again went up and then in 78, that was the last time Congress got majority in those years, it had 67% of the seats. The second largest party in terms of seats is given in the, this row down here. In 1952, it was the Kisan Mazdoor Praja party with 8% seats, then Praja Socialist Party. That came into picture and in, and in three elections, it won about 9 to 10% of the seat. Thereafter, the famous split during Indira Gandhi's time came. Uh, the Congress was divided into Congress R and Congress organization. The elections happened after the split and Congress O came at the second position with just 11% of the seat. The Congress came back with a thumping majority of 76%. By 1978, that's the time when the emergency was imposed, we saw the emergence of the Janta Party at second position with 26% seats in its favour. The next nine elections in Karnataka saw the power of the Congress diminishing. And that's the time when several national parties like the Janta Dal, Janta Party, as well as the BJP started gaining prominence in the state. 1983 and 1985, we saw the Janta Party getting 42% and 62% of the seats and they had formed the government. The Congress came at second place at 37% and 29% respectively. Then in 1989, that's the time when VP Singh was the Prime Minister and it was a turbulent time at the centre. The Congress made a strong comeback in the Karnataka Assembly with 79% of seats going to them. These results left the Congress surprised themselves because 79% was the highest ever seats that Congress had ever got in Karnataka. And the person who led Congress to victory in this election was the veteran Congress leader Virendra Patel who was then made the chief minister second time around. The 1994 election in Karnataka was a turning point in the history of Karnataka elections. This is one election where the Congress party did not figure either in the first place nor in the second place. The election was won by Janta Dal with over 51% of the seat and this is the time when the BJP for the first time got more than 10% seats in the state, it was at 18%. The 1999 election in Karnataka saw the Congress make another comeback. It got up 59% of the seats and at second place, the BJP did marginally better than the last election. It got 20% of the seats. Again, at the center at this time was the Vajpayee government, the NDA government, and yet the state held out against the central government. The Congress chief minister this time around was S.M. Krishna. In 2004, the BJP got 35% of the seats, Congress 29%. I'll tell you shortly what happened and who formed the government during that year. Then 2008, that's the time when the BJP got 49% seats. That's the maximum so far they have ever 
been able to achieve. The Congress was at second place at 36%. 2013, Congress makes a comeback with 54% of the seats. This time around, it's Siddharamaya who is the Chief Minister and the BJP is relegated far below at only 18%. And in 2018, the last election, BJP got 46%, Congress 36%. The Congress had formed the government along with JDS and then we all know what happened. So the answer to my question is that in all these 15 elections in the state of Karnataka, the Bharatiya Janta Party has never won majority seats. The answer is zero. And yet the current leadership of the BJP wants us to believe that it had got a Prachand Bahumat. Prachand has a negative connotation. So I really don't like that word. A better word could have been unprecedented. But then the BJP never had any kind of majority. It was always below the majority. In fact, it has been clinging to power by a wafer thin margin and that too with uh, alliances with other people. And that's why I'm saying that this time around with the headwinds becoming even stronger, the BJP is very likely to lose in Karnataka. The first six elections where Congress had won, we saw the Chief Ministers K. Hanumantaya, Manjappa, Nijalingappa, who continued for uh, many more terms. Then we also had B. D. Jatti coming in. Then in 67, first time around, Virendra Patil became the Congress Chief Minister. Thereafter, for two terms, it was Devraj Urs who managed the affairs of the Congress in the state. In 83 and 85, the, the Janta Party had won the elections and we saw Ram Krishna Hegre come in as the Chief Minister, followed by a short stint by S.R. Bumai. Then in 89, the Congress came back to power, Virendra Patel became the Chief Minister once again. I will tell you a small story about Virendra Patel. Virendra Patel was known to be a very good administrator. When he became the Chief Minister second time around, Karnataka was in financial crisis and there were many other problems. Now, it is uh, widely believed or rumored that the Congress engineered some communal rights within the state to get rid of Virendra Patel. And R Rajiv Gandhi at that time, who was just passing through Bangalore, stopped there for a few hours, did not even meet Virendra Patel. He met with the opposition leaders. And then and there, he announced that Virendra Patel has been sacked as the chief minister. Virendra Patel at that time had just suffered a stroke. So he could not take this humiliation. And then he decided to retire from politics altogether. But the Congress had to pay a price. The very next election, the Congress lost very badly to the Janata Dal. That was the election of 1994 when the Congress was totally wiped out from the state, H.D. Devagora became the Chief Minister. 1999, we saw S.M. Krishna, he completed his full term. 2004, the Congress did not win, but then with, along with J.D.S., H.D. Kumar Swami, Dharam Singh was sworn in as the Chief Minister, but very soon, Kumar Swami switched sides and then, he became the chief minister with the support of Yadurappa. During the same year, Yadurappa did become the chief minister, but only for about a week. And thereafter, president's rule was imposed. The very next election saw the BJP come into power on their own. Yadurappa was made the chief minister once again. Midway through his term, the infamous mining scam took place due to which the leadership of the Bhadiya Janda Party forced Yadurappa to resign. Yadurappa did not like this at all and went on to form his own party. And in the very next election, they, then the Congress came back with a thumping majority. The BJP leadership just before the 2018 elections got Yadurappa to merge his party back into the BJP. But still, 
they were unable to win the 2018 elections on their own. The Congress and the JDS got together and formed the government and then after a few months came the Operation Kamal. After the fall of the Kumar Swami government, B.H. Yadurappa was again made the Chief Minister of Karnataka. And a few years down the line, about two, two and a half years, the Virendra Patel moment came for Yadurappa. He was asked to resign this time around for no valid reason. The reasons are best known to Mr. Modi and Mr. Amit Shah. So, B.S. Yadurappa has been twice bitten by his own leadership. So, there have been two similar cases. The strongman of the party was dismissed by the party leaders sitting in Delhi and the very next elections were lost. This time around, because Yadurappa has been dismissed in a similar fashion as within the Patel, there is every chance that BJP is going to pay for this action. So that's all in today's episode. I look forward to your comments as always. I'll see you again next week with some more interesting data. Till then, goodbye and Namaskar.